I think now is a good time to start transitioning to this, this idea of uh, investing early on in a publicist. Um, first and foremost, I mean, how did you even justify, what was, what's the cost? Like, what did it cost you to have this publicist early on? I'm curious. So to start, it was uh, $2,500 a month. Okay. Which Two, is uh, a lot. Yeah. Especially early yeah. on. You don't have a lot of extra, I mean, that's, I'm, I'm sure that came out of like your earnings, potential earnings. Did it not? Or did you budget for it? Oh yeah. No, I mean, we didn't have any money. I just knew that, you know, that could project us to, you know, the goal of any restaurant is to become a staple, right? But if in order to be a staple, you have to be around in the neighborhood for a long time, 20 years, 30 years, you know, um, it's, it's, it's definitely a huge goal. I think for every restaurant is to become a staple in their neighborhood. But I just thought if we can get on TV, I thought that could really, you know, project us into this staple status a lot quicker than, you know, 20, 30 years kind of thing. So that was my thought behind it. I also don't believe still to this day in traditional marketing. So like sending out mailers and okay, so direct mail marketing. Yeah. Direct mail, even coupons. I'm very against coupons. We get pitched all the time about, Oh, you need coupons for this. Or do you want to do a coupon? I don't like coupons. I think I feel like it just cheapens your brand. I know they work. So I'm not, I'm not really like, you know, I don't want to come down on them too hard. A lot of uh, people who believe that, yes, you might see an, an initial flow of people because of these coupons and you see more heads in your restaurant, but are they the right heads? Are they the kind of people that are going to show loyalty to you or are they the cheap mother effers that just want a discounted meal and have no loyalty? Yeah, exactly. The discount shoppers, right? And you don't want that kind of business. Well, and one thing I learned from our mutual friend, which I think he learned from his restaurant consultant, um, was a quote and the quote goes, marketing creates trial and operations create sales. So it took me a long time to wrap my head around that marketing creates trial operations, create sales. And really like your operations have to be locked stock and smoking barrels. I mean, they need to be so tight. Um, and that's what will bring people back into your restaurant. You know, if they have a great experience, they come in, the customer service is great. The food's great. You know, they come back, the food's the same, you know, there's consistency there, the bathrooms are clean, the customer service is still great. You know, if those operations are rolling smoothly, um, then you'll get repeat customers. But marketing just creates trial. Mm -hmm. So before you hire a, a, a publicist or a PR rep, you know, you better have your operations ready to rock and roll and you better have a great product because you know, marketing, PR, it could, you know, it's great. It will create that trial where people will come in and give you a try, but it's the operations that will keep people coming back in over and yeah. over and over again. Just like, again, go, we're, we're like down at surface level to zoom back up to 20,000 feet, which is why it's so important for you the first couple of weeks or months to get those systems, to get that culture, to get the training down. So people, when you do have the masses coming, you're locked in, it. you know, you, you, you're, you're, everyone's aligned with what the job done right looks like. And we've had practice so you can knock it out of the park. When you do invest capital into driving people into your restaurant, your people will be prepared. Uh, so $2,500 a month, you hire this publicist. What does she start doing? Like, what are the first things that she starts doing when she has her, when, when the contract's been signed, she's working for you. What does it look like? So, and we, um, just to backtrack a little bit, we interviewed about five publicists before we found, the one that we thought was a great fit for us, you know, um, because a public, what'd you say? Why was she a great fit? I think she was a great fit because of her relationships that she had with um, the different networks, specifically TV. So that was one thing we really wanted to focus on is getting ourselves onto TV, local Chicago television. And uh, we thought that we wanted a publicist that had great relationships and a great track record of, you know, getting people on TV, getting their clients on TV, you know, and we're still in that process because the big goal is to kind of go on national TV. So, but, you know, as a stepping stone point, you have to start with local and then you can kind of move to national. Nice. So that was um, a big key. Okay. So um, you started saying something um, when you, uh, you, you interviewed five uh, publicists and then this publicist that I, I, I interrupted your train of thought. Can you pick it back up? Yeah, absolutely. So um, when we identified the girl that we wanted to work with, um, 
she got us on TV right away. So we went on a show called Windy City Live. Uh, Windy City Live, yeah, it's um, it is uh, it's the show that replaced Oprah. So when Oprah retired um, on ABC Seven, um, they were the slot. That was the show that took over Oprah's spot. It's live TV, um, and uh, we went on, did a segment um, like a heat challenge, and literally no joke. I mean. It was five minutes long. It lasted. Uh, the second it ended, our phone started ringing. And before you know it, um, the next day, we had our, our busiest day to date. You know, we had a line out the door. Then um, one of the biggest food critics in Chicago, this guy named uh, Steve Delinsky, he's also on ABC7, and he has a, a segment called Hungry Hound. He goes around and tries a lot of the new places, um, but it's really hard to make his cut. And Sure enough, she reaches out to him. You know, he goes, yeah, you know, maybe I'll stop by. And, and it's all a gamble, too. Nothing's guaranteed at all. This, You know, she said she bugged him about one of her clients for three years, and he still has never tried the restaurant. So she gives him a call. Two weeks later, all of a sudden, he shows up in our restaurant and actually had a bad experience. It was, it was crushing. I get an email from him saying, you know, the, the, sandwich was partly dry the fries were he said the fries were good but half the sandwich was great the other half was not good we have a lot of work to do I mean he just like tore us a new one I, I was devastated mm. and literally I was on a call with her saying like how are we can we you know can we bring food to his office can we see if we get another shot you know and uh, literally in the middle of that conversation she gets an email saying hey it's Steve Dolinsky I want to go to fry the coop and shoot a segment um, are they free on Thursday and so you know, out of nowhere, he wanted to, you know, shoot something with us. Uh, so next thing you know, about a month later, we get on The Hungry Hound, and that aired twice that weekend. And I'm not kidding you, a line formed around our building. Wow. We were so busy, we sold out of chicken uh, five days, or five different occasions, different days, in uh, about a two-week span after that aired, that we were just running out. I had to hire, we went from 10 employees to uh, 25, literally like almost overnight. We had to hire 15 people after we aired. And then from there, you know, it just kind of spiraled, you know, then we got on um, a show called Chicago's Best, which is kind of like um, diners, drive-ins and dives a little bit, but for the Chicago um, area, it's on WGN. Um, we went on WGN, uh, did a national segment. They do a lunch break, their national news. Um, we got on that, uh, we got written up in the Chicago Tribune. Uh, featured in the Chicago Sun Times, um, you know, it just behind all these opportunities. A hundred percent, yeah. So is it safe to say you recouped your two thousand five hundred dollars a month? <laughs> on her be a part of your team. Uh, if you're talking about return on investment, yeah. which I hate those corporate <laughs> terms, but uh, yeah, yeah, it definitely. I mean, I don't know where we would be without all that media, you know, attention. And, and it's a third party unbiased attention too. So, you know, it's really the publicist is just reaching out on your behalf to say, Hey, come check out, check out my client. You know, they're doing this or that. Uh, and there's no guarantee that, that, awesome. that journalist is going to come out. Yeah. Uh, and you know, it's a lot of work to be constantly, you, know, you guys can do this yourself. If you're listening to this, I mean, it, it's, it's not easy. It's going to be that thing after a 12 hour day, after you've gone home or, you know, after even a 14 hour day and you're exhausted, just make it an effort to like email one person, you know, get home, have one person, make a list of like the top 10 people or the top 10 resources you want to be of. And just, just slowly just start reaching out to people. And it helps to have somebody who has these relationships already established for sure. Uh, and in it, you know, that's one thing that you can just, you know, automate and you're probably going to expedite the process. But if you don't have the budget, the budget for the publicist, I mean, you can do these things on your own. I'll try to link to an episode I recorded with somebody who kind of took us through that process of how to reach out and like what, what being your own publicist looks like. Yeah. And you know, you're a hundred percent right. You can totally do it yourself. I think it's harder because they get pitched from all these publicists and people anyways all day long. Mm -hmm. And I think, you know, it's kind of like cutting through that noise. Um, but if you can, you know, once you get a relationship with, say, a journalist at your local paper, you know, um, then all of a sudden they'll come back to you. You know, I just did an interview uh, from the Chicago Tribune with somebody who three years ago did an interview. And then he just called me out of the blue. He's working on a story and he's, hey, I wanted to pick your brain about this or that. Um, so, 
yeah, once you get in, you're in, but um, it definitely is a lot of work. You know, like you said, after a 12 hour day, you gotta get your emails, pound your emails, pound phone calls, leave messages, you know, it's, it's like cold calling, um, but it's definitely doable for sure. If you enjoyed this video, please help us out. You can do it by liking, sharing, subscribing, and hitting that bell icon. It really helps out. And don't forget, there's a complete archive of every episode with show notes at restaurantunstoppable.com.